Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing wonderfully well. Last week, loads of you sent me this picture, no idea why, but you did. It's a demo picture of the 1950s over-the-shoulder Hail Mary low to medium yield nuclear bomb toss. And you asked us to recreate it. Well, we've actually already done it twice, in fact, kind of properly. This video shows F-86 F Saber Labs nuclear bomb toss tutorial. This was a thing in the 50s to drop low yield nuclear bombs from small fighter bombers. And I'll link that in the video description if you want to go and see it. So instead we're going to do a competition and try and find out which jet can do the best Hail Mary nuke toss. We've got Su-27, Su-25, AV-8B, F-14B, F-15E, F-16C, F-5E, F-86F, and we will not allow the lab's computer to do the guidance. It will be done manually. F-18C, JF-17, which we might not be able to use, Mirage 2000, we might not be able to use, we'll see, MiG-15, MiG-19, MiG-21, MiG-29, and Mirage F-1, all core game planes. We're going to drop our analog for the 1950s Mark 7 variable yield nuclear bomb. All of those planes will start low level 400 knots and 5 miles away from a target. We'll do our ingress as per the technique, low level, medium to high speed and do the Hail Mary above this target. The target is a small pyramid with a tank on top just so it's easy to visualise. There are ranging rings around the target. 1,000 feet radius, 2,000 feet radius, and 3,000 feet radius. To score which aircraft does best, there are two things we're going to look at. First, the accuracy of the drop. In the middle, three points. Here, two points. Here, one point. Outside, zero points. As well as accuracy, egress distance is very important. And we're going to measure when the bomb hits the lateral distance that the aircraft has made it away because surviving the blast is just as important as hitting the target. So accuracy and egress survival. We want to keep this as scientific as possible. It's not possible to do this fully scientifically because there are so many variables and human behavior is very hard to control. But we're going to do the best we can. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to go aircraft per aircraft sequentially. Each aircraft, all pilots will have one go in. The best scoring pilot for that particular aircraft will go through as the official score for that aircraft. That will help nullify human error as much as possible. We've got aircraft from the 1950s all the way up to now. We don't have the Mark 7 nuke in-game, so what we wanted was a bomb between 1,000 and 2,000 pounds, which is exactly what we've got. So each aircraft has one of the nearest bombs it can get. So this Harrier, for instance, has one 1,000 pound Mark 83. Now, if, this is very important, the aircraft really struggles to fly properly with one bomb, i.e. it has to have it on a wing and not in the center like a Harrier, then I allow a counterweight on the other side side but you may only drop one bomb if possible. If a plane can't carry a 1,000 pound bomb then it's got a 2,000 pound bomb and so on and the Russians carry 500 kilogram bombs about 1,100 pounds. There is only one rule we're putting in place, which is that the aircraft must be at least or close to 400 knots when in the ingress, and that's to stop cheating. We found that the easiest way of getting a bomb accurately on target is to go very slow, like 100 or 150 knots. But that's considered cheating because you couldn't do that in a real ingress. You would get shot down by AAA. So 400 knots minimum just to stop any kind of cheating. Otherwise, there are no rules. And we'll talk about technique when we're doing planning. Uh, this is impossible to master in all of these aircraft. So we're just going to do our best. But can we have some rough predictions at which aircraft is going to be best at it and why, please? I would think either the F-18 or the F-16 mm. because a lot of us put a lot of time into those planes. So we're probably the most familiar with the setup of the controls, the cockpit, the flight dynamics of the airplane. It's one thing to pull vertical, but it's also important that you're making a straight pull vertical and you're not wavering right. left to right. I think it's going to be the plane with the best tech in it, so the best symbology, because without the symbology, it's very hard to know your exact attitude in a high G pull. Well, pretty much impossible. So F-16, for instance, will tell you on your HUD your exact attitude, as well as that it has full fly-by-wire flight control system, which will help to keep you level. So I think I have to agree the best technology here, which is probably the F-16 overall, 
is probably going to win this, I would say. Uh, obviously, none of these aircraft are designed, I should say, to do this. None of them have symbology that will actually allow them to do an over-the-shoulder toss off. Apart from the F-86, which has the lab system, and I think the MiG-21, but we're not going to allow those. So it's all going to be dropped by human eye. Any other predictions, guys? I'm thinking one of the Russian ones, hmm. because it seems like those bombs become streamlined a lot quicker than the American ones for some reason. Interesting. Yep. All right, guys, uh, last our predictions. The final thing is technique. There are different techniques. Bear in mind, we're not following the analog computer that, for instance, this aircraft has. We're all doing it by eye. Uh, Simba, you've got your idea. How are you going to do it? So I'm going to try to stay kind of as close to the manual as I can, somewhere in the 450 to 500 knot range, and try and hold a steady 4G pull and release kind of on timing with when I cross that 5 to 10 degrees past full vertical. Uh, there's nothing saying we have to do that, viewers. I'm going to do a fast ingress. I'm going to do a 9G pull. And the reason is I want to get vertical as quickly as possible and drop pretty much on the vertical. Welcome in, viewers. I'm starting in the AV-8B and punch it. Right. And the difficult thing today, viewers, is remembering how to fly all the friggin' planes. So air to ground, that on. That there. Stores. That. That. It's the minimum amount of buttons I need. Off we go. Right, here's my technique, viewers. Watch it go wrong now. Oh. We must keep wings level. It's absolutely imperative. And drop bomb. Right. Did someone check it dropped? It nope. It came off. Just give me a rough footage so I know when to cut the camera back so I can... Because I'm obviously doing the judging yeah. as well. You're still in the vertical. Popped out. Just under 8,500 feet. 5,000. 4,000. Oh, 3, I missed. 000, I missed by miles. 2,000. Oh, damn it and pause. pause right viewers uh it's hard there's nothing to say it's a difficult thing to do and i'll give you the mission if i remember in the video description so you can come and play if you want i got zero points for accuracy and i got rounded four nautical miles distance next simba simba does a much more realistic version of the hail mary he goes past the target and then 4g pull up and then drops it over the plum whereas i'm trying to drop on the plum viewers we've got different ways of doing it it's just another way of trying to get rid of any human error or we'll find the best way should we say for each plane see so you see he's gone past the target he use that up, uses that as his pull point he's going to go 4g or you know you can see he's at 4g now and he's going to drop at 110 degrees now dropping 110 degrees is the hardest thing viewers because it's actually very hard, even with modern avionics, to know your exact instantaneous attitude. Um, because, you know, you just have to take my word for it, because the angle of attack is so high when doing a loop that you can't actually tell what your instantaneous vector is. Um, go and try on a plane and you'll see what I mean. It won't actually be what it says on HUD. Right, Simba, uh, that looks a really good drop. I know we like mocking Simba viewers, but that looks like a really good drop. You can jettison your uh, bombs that you've got if you want that you've retained. Go on, Simba. Go on, Simba. Oh, it's a few feet out. Pause. Simba, you made it... Oh, five miles. You were faster than me. So you got zero points just, but you made it five miles. So at least that's something. Poosh. Looks like Poosh is doing Simba's technique of waiting for the point as a cue and then tossing over the shoulder. Which, as we said, is the proper way to do it, but it's not necessarily how we have to do it today. Cool. Drop, get the chuff out of there. What do you reckon, guys? I reckon that's pretty good. Looks good from the angle. I feel it in my bones, guys. I feel like it's going to be a one-pointer. You know what? If we get a one-pointer, I'll be happy with that. It, they're all coming up long. Look at that. Mine was long. You're gutted. No, no, no. no, nope. nope. It's right there. No, it's my, it's my okay. what mine shows. Unfortunately, as you can see, viewers, it was out. Uh, again, they're all long. Uh, where, where, where is he? I've lost him. If you got out of your plane, you... Yeah, I, I did, up. but it, it was at yeah. two and a half miles. All it right. was at two and a half miles. Fire! All right, fire. Wow, toss. It's going to be long again. All of us are doing it long, isn't it? It's not just, not just a decent. Everyone's showing it long. Sorry, viewers. Yeah, chalk that one up to being a horrible pilot. <laughs> yeah, I got that problem. I think you were just excited and uh, prematurely released. I got that problem as well, guys. Right, uh, it's not very far. It's a few miles, so we yeah. won't bother putting it down. Right, cannonball. Same technique as the other boys. Oh. 
That's okay. a 12,000 foot toss. It's definitely not going long, and that's been our problem so far, guys. We've been going long in the Harrier. I, I don't, I feel it's not long, and I feel it's not short, which can only mean one thing. I think we're getting in the circle. Finally, viewers. Ooh. Could Cannibal be the master? I don't know. Going the other way, though. <laughs> yeah. No, please he, don't. You might be long the other way. You son of a bitch. Don't do it. No, he's mm -hmm. in, he's in. Oh, come on. What is that? <laughs> it's not fair. Why so hard? Yes, zero points. I get it. How far did he get? Five miles, same as Simba. Boom! So didn't fail like everybody else. It's hard, <laughs> man. It's failed the other side. Yeah. Doc! Pooper scooper. I can already tell that I think that's one that's pretty gonna be outside. You guys? That one looked like it went straight vertical. So what I suggest we do, guys, uh, because like I said, it's taken uh, 45 minutes just to record this first plane. Obviously, it's not sustainable. I suggest we put the best, what are considered the most confident, one or two pilots per plane. And that way it just speeds things up. It removes the science, the science a bit, but, you know, we've got to get it, got to get it recorded. Uh, so who's going to be most... Uh, so obviously that was a zero. Pause. Okay, that was rather uneventful, I'm afraid, viewers. So basically it's taken like half of our recording time just to record the Harrier viewers because setting this stuff up takes time. Um, so we're going to move on in a less scientific fashion. We're going to have one or two people per aeroplane, the most confident, basically. Right, viewers, uh, Simba's the only one with the muscle memory ready to drop a bomb in an F-14. The rest of us would have to have a practice, and then that's another 45 minutes gone. So Simba, go. Go, big Tomcat. Great plane, but almost certainly terrible for this job. Drop. Now this plane, at least if it doesn't hit, has the chance of getting away real fast. So wings back. Jesus, Simba, that was a... Yeah, I waited too long for the release. That did not go where we think. We'll give you another go because it's... Um... That's got to chase you down, Simba. It's a really big... It just shows. It's cost the plane so fast compared and powerful compared to the Harrier. The Harrier just doesn't have the power to chuck it that far. But with this plane, it shows how many freaking variables there are if you haven't got a computer telling you to when to release it. So the really powerful plane viewers allows it to get away, but it also makes dropping the bomb without computer technology telling you when to drop it harder, which is why I had to put the um, speed limit in, because if you go really slow, it just gets really, really easy, but unrealistic because you could never get away with it. Bomb away. Big cat, go big cat, burn us off. Got a good feeling. I think it's the same problem, Simba. I think the plane is so pow. Oh, it might be good. But my feel is that the plane is so powerful, it's chucking up to 20,000 feet, and nothing is accurate at 20,000 feet when you're tossing a bomb up. Come on, wind. Just blow a little. Give me a little crosswind. This may be in the circle. Come on, Simba. Come on, Simba. No, we're going to miss uh, it. Nope, we're going to miss. Just barely, though. You know what, view? It really is one of these things. When we turn the camera on, no one can get it on. In practice, we have to have a practice. We've got two in the very center. I got four in the outer one. And now as soon as the camera goes on, but I'm afraid that's pressure, viewers. That's what it does to people. And as ever, we don't script these for YouTube views. We just do it honestly. And there you go. Never mind, Simba. That's the way it goes. We're moving on to F15E. I can't remember where the buttons are. Check. Check. Nothing else today is a good um, reminder session of how to fly the planes or remember the buttons. Right, I think I'm set. All right, so I'm gonna use my technique and then we'll unleash the boys on the other technique. So what I like to do, viewers, is pull up before the pyramid, go pretty much plumb and drop the bomb straight down. I'm not saying it's the best way and it's probably Low not, altitude. but at least it gives us altitude. a different method. And rip. Try and find it in your mirror altitude. and drop Low. and out. Did the bomb go? Low. Yeah, it's off. Another fast Low. plane. Altitude. Capped out of 5700, starting to drop down. Oh, please don't tell me I'm going to miss again. Come it was a great one, guys. 5,000, 3,000. God damn 2, you, son of a bitch. Yeah, I missed. That's frustrating, guys. I really felt like I had that. Right, obviously zero points, and I got, oh, staggering three miles. Poosh. Poosh is going big. Poosh is going big, 500 knots. Good luck. I'm away. Uh, 
Oh, I don't have a good feeling about it. Uh, it all depends on how well the the nose comes down on it. Is it going? No, is it going? Uh... Oh, please go in. Please go in. We need to get something in. Go on, Poosh. We believe in you. Right, don't uh, despawn this time, Poosh. I won't. This is going to be in. Oh, Poosh! Finally! Finally! That's a two-pointer. And pause. That's a two-pointer, which is great. And six miles. Yay, Poosh! Right, next guy. Simba. Bomb away. Get out of here, Simba. Oh, he certainly got altitude on it. 13,000. 14,000. 15,000. Yeah, that was my worry, the keeping the wings level mm -hmm. on the, the yeah. pull. Mm. Turn 10 minutes on the other side. You know what? We've got something on the scoreboard, Simba. We're all right. I'm gonna... Pause. All right, that's the best we're gonna get time to do. Next, F-16. Well, as I say, one thing about your technique is it uh, reduces the distance you'll be able to get away from it. That's a problem, Pooh. So I think my technique has the possibility of being more accurate because I'm going less far, but because I'm 9 g I'm losing my speed and I can't get away. So that's a real fair point. Right, viewers, F-16, I'm gonna try my technique first and then I'll hand over to the boys. Right, uh, God. Uh, Edge of master arms on, edge of ground. CCIP, manual, that's it, I'm good. F-16, easiest plane. My technique also very much determines on, is determined by the handling of the aircraft. It needs to be able to change pitch very quickly. Whereas the boys' technique, 4G to 6G technique, doesn't matter as much. And, boom. Bomb away. Baby, we need something good. Got a good feeling I'm about it. Tracking it near the right edge. I think I accidentally Battery. rolled. I looked behind me and I felt myself roll. Seven thousand feet. Come on, drop. Drop. No, Six it's gonna miss. Feet. It's gonna miss. Yep. Ah! So just turn the frigging camera on. And pause. Obviously, I'm a giant failure again, viewers. But can I beat the F-15 for distance? No, I can't. Da, Simba. That. Highest yet. Twenty. Nineteen thousand. It's gonna make twenty. Well, at least he's gonna get a big distance, viewers. That's kind of important, right? Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand and six feet. And because this is a nuclear bomb, you doesn't have to be mega mega accurate. I mean, you know, within a few thousand feet would be nice, but it's not like a conventional bomb. But right, please drop square and true. It's not dropping square and true. It kind of goes weird, little bit. Yeah, it's got a little angle to it. So the aerodynamics is pushing it. That doesn't feel right to me. I don't think it should do that. Actually, in my view, look, that should be plumb. There's no wind, but it's not. It's going to miss. Frustrating view. It's very frustrating for us. But look, it hasn't gone plumb, so it doesn't feel that that bomb's dropping right to me. Gravity wins. Always wins. We well, certainly won on the distance. Jesus, 11 miles. That's what I was saying. The Russian bombs seem like they streamline a lot better yeah. than the American ones. Well, it doesn't feel right, Boost. These bombs don't drop down properly. It seems, especially when they go high, when they go to 20,000 feet, they never reach plumb when they come back down again, which is obviously wrong. It should be plumb within a few seconds, 10, 10 20 seconds. Assuming that they're designed to drop straight down. Maybe I've got it wrong, but they look like they're designed to drop straight down, right? Uh, I think this one's going to keep carrying on. Tail fin should streamline them, so gravity yeah, can drag wrong. them down. Yeah, it's not so. like it's a GVU where it's going to try and use a little body lift. See that one plumb? This one's plumbing straight down. Stand by. Okay. We can see its pitch. It says at the bottom of the screen. It says minus 80. But I would have thought that should be minus 90. I don't see why it's not minus 90, but... I don't know, pause. Obviously it missed by a mile, and fire did not get further than the other yeah, side. Yeah, I stalled out at the top. Cannonball. Oh, that's way off. Oh, damn it, cannonball. 
interacting the right way. Everyone's left yeah. winging down. Why is everyone left winging down in that plane? In my mind, that should be vertical deck because it had no left or right lateral, really, not much. It should be 90 degrees now, but it's 10 degrees off, and that's what's making it so freaking hard. You might. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, oh, well done, it might, be a, it might be a two pointer. Well done, Cannonball. Please, W. Yes, it's a two pointer. And yeah, saving our blushes again, Cannonball. Right, that is two for accuracy and break. And seven. Right, we're going to move on now, viewers. So, F5E. Fire. At least it won't get too high with this plane. Did the bomb go? Yes, it did. It oh, you're always dropping too short, Fire. All of yours have been way short. Oh, it's, I just can't get that angle right on the on my windscreen, so... No, yeah. You know. yeah you, you, like, release before... So you, your bombs are always, like, trailing off long. Well, you're going to take out Mavis's health, so I guess that's a good thing, right? And... Bump. Five, Simba, you're up. They going way too long over the shoulder. Yeah, I think you I think you released late. If it dropped down vertically, it would be fine. But because it drops down at ten degrees, if you know what I mean, ten degrees off plum, it's just going to keep going onto the city, which is a real shame. So watch this viewers, just, just to see what I mean. Look at the pitch down at the bottom, if you can read that. That's 70, 90 straight down obviously. That's 70. So by the time it got 10,000 feet down, if I pause it there, it was still 14, 14 degrees off plumb. Which can't be right, it just can't be right. Which is making this impossible because the bomb needs to fall down obviously, not sidewards. So I think it's all a function of where in the arc you release it. Because if, you, if, you, if it's got forward mo motion at all, it's going to have less than a 90 but, degree. It has to be. Gravity is always pulling it down, but its lateral energy only ever came from an aeroplane, and it's only giving it on its on its first impulse. There's no more impulse. There's nothing pushing it sideways anymore. So its sidewardsness is going to get less and less and less, where its gravity is constant, always pulling it down. So let me know what you think, viewers. In my mind, after a few thousand feet, that will be straight down. It will never be anything other than straight down. So that's really getting my knickers in a twist, as we say here. Right, anyway, obviously it missed in five miles. I think we give up on the F5. Let's go F86 without labs. Fire. You can see here, here I'm annoyed, viewers. All right, we got a second longer than I normally would. This is a different type of bomb, viewers. This is a non-aerodynamic bomb. Or at least it's not one of the modern aerodynamic bombs. So it'd be interesting to see if this one falls. I still think I was a couple of degrees too soon on letting go. I think you were too. Yeah, and I've gone, it's going lateral too. Ah! This is not as easy as it looks, viewers. What is it doing on your screen, Cap? Swinging about like a bitch. Ah. But the important thing is, it's actually going plumbed down. Unlike the Mark 84 series, it's actually going 90 degrees down. So this bomb is actually dropping. Look, that's kind of proved my concept. Uh, 88 degrees. So nearest damn it, that's come plumb down, which is what a bomb should do. Unless it's being asked to guide somewhere laterally with no lateral impulse, that's what a bomb should do. So I think that actually dropped right. Anyway, uh, I'm going to measure you out at four miles. So zero four. Poosh! All right, do a push thing. I think we're a good chance with this bomb dropping plum. I think we've got a good chance if we just release it right. All right, push my man. Come on, push. Come on, push. Because I haven't said I've got no wind on today, viewers, so we've got no lateral forces on this bomb apart from its initial, you know, the initial drop impulse. Come on. 77, 78, 79. Why is it not reaching 90? Come on, reach 90. Just long. Yeah, 83. Head to the Sphinx. Almost reached plum. Unlucky Poosh. I have a theory. I'm going to try. Six miles in this plane. Seems like the faster we're getting, the more body lift the bomb is trying to exuberate. Interesting. Interesting. So that's why I was trying to stay right at that, just above right. the 400 knot range to see if the bomb reacts less. Right, follow this. I'm going to do exactly that, then, Simba. And I'm in a weak ass bog as well, so I'm going to get that bomb slow. Right, viewers, let's see if we can remember this. And unpause and. Master arm, air to ground, select bomb, mode, manual, M fuse, nose, E fuse, instant, done. Right viewers, I'm going to go the absolute lowest speed I can to 
survive at 400 knots, nice and low. What Simba's saying is he thinks if the bomb traveling at you know, stupid speeds is making it, turning it into an aeroplane. Did it drop? Yep. Hey, for him. All right. So what, I deliberately dropped that pretty slowly, guys. So I don't want it to go high. Yeah, that's gonna be a good drop, I think. Oh, we've that's, started the spin. So Simba the figure the trick, uh oh. Yeah, as Simba figured the trick out. This is gonna be close. It's within the rules, yeah. viewers. It's above 400 knots. Ingress. Oh, is it gonna be three? Two oh, pointer. it's right on the edge and stop. Oh, stop. Ah, with the pause button. Yeah, I'll go with two pointer, guys. It's, it's literally on the, on the edge. That's my best drop so far in with the camera on, so I'm happy with that. And the way I actually, did it was what Simba said, low speed and low angle in the drop. Yes, Simba? I would actually like you to do your technique one more time, just at 500 knots. Paddle. Drop. Right, viewers, let's see what this friggin' bomb does. Okay, so it's showing a pitch up of 84 degrees. So I went for 20,000 feet, it didn't quite get there, but it's not an F-16, so it's, it's near enough. It's, it's, it's got enough to get it some serious speed, I think, guys. It might tumble again. The tumble seems to be a good sign. It seems to be that it's got the vertical, not full tumble, but you see that rock like that? Feels like it gets vertical. See, it's like pitching for body lift. It's going straight down, Simba. It's going 90 okay. degrees. It's going straight down, I think. Was that a Mark yep. 83 or Mark 84? It's an 83. Uh, 83, and that is directly down. It's the first one I've seen that went actually straight down. Look, I even got it in there. Look at that. Yeah, your your release angle was was like 84 degrees, so it was six degrees off center. Oh, God, it's so amazing, viewers. We always open up these weird cans of worms. Anyway, we're going to move on. Someone else have a go. And Simba. Oh. goes so that was at about a 60 degree angle when it pitched when it's pitching over here fairly good feeling about that simba no it's done the weird thing again it's done the thing that we don't want it to do this time where it, it, it it's got lift and it's flying in one direction um this is looking pretty decent oh yeah but you're actually gonna hit the target uh, it's like it i'm like no oh, like he's gonna, hit the pyramid. he's gonna hit the pyramid could he hit the tank and Simba hit right in the middle of the pyramid. Friggin' unreal. Well, we know which is the best bomber now, and it hurts my soul. Where is he? Where did he get to? So he traded everything in for accuracy. So, oh, not eight miles. Wow, I reckon that's the winning thing. MiG-21. Cannonball. Simba. Is this our first Russian bomb? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how their 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 fall is compared Roger. to the American NATO ones. Simba, talk us through it. How did you get it on target? Like I said, try to keep, I might have pulled a little bit harder than normal in the beginning, but I tried to ease back off to around that 4G, and this time I released at about 4 to 5 degrees past 90 degrees up. 4 to 5 past 90, roger. Uh, this is one of the two planes designed to do this, or, yeah, designed to do this maybe isn't the right way of saying it, but... We're in the era, era of aircraft where this was an accepted type of bomb drop. So you drop both of them, but they're simultaneous, so... Yeah, it should be near enough. Oh, wow, they really are simultaneous. Look at that. Yeah, he's long. Who else has got the MiG-21 ready to go? You have to switch the, the air to ground mode to ground. You have to switch the little radio dial to bombs and then switch the gun sight to bombardment. All right, gun, gun sights up top. Pause. Simba! Here it goes, it's 4G, 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 3G, 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 4G, 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 3G, 3G, bombs away. Nah, miles off. I'm just going to skip, uh, it's miles off. It's going to be worse than Cannibal, so I'm going to skip it, but well done for getting the friggin' bombs off. Viewers, MiG 29A. Uh, I don't know. Let's see what happens. This might actually be quite good, guys. Just saying. Launch authorized. Bomb away. And it's fast. And my screen looks like it's nosing over oh, the missed. wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's oh, it's gone. Man. Wow. Yeah, she just she just finished her nose over at twelve thousand feet, and she is way offline. Viewers, that was absolutely abysmal. Maximums. Poor Mavis. Poor Mavis is going to get a five hundred kilo bomb. Speed. Russian bomb. Maybe it does Maximum like the Russian. So maybe she'll like it. Right, that was basically terrible. And pause. Whoops. Okay, out of interest. I was. 10 miles, so at least I've got some speed. Right, uh, I am. Didn't come off. Oh, push, for God's sake. All right, someone else getting the damn plane, guys. I missed that. I totally dropped the bomb, but... No, you didn't. Oh, damn what? it. It felt like... Exit. <sighs> didn't come off. Why is all your bombs not coming off? All right, guys, you want to give up on this one? We've got more Russian shit to go through. The Su-27 is a midline yeah. bomb, so... It's going to be a lot yeah. easier. Fewers, we had some problems yep. with the MiG. Um, yeah. Let's just go to flanker. It's a very similar airframe, or a very similar yeah. avionics, should I say, but it's got a centerline bomb. It's going to make it an awful lot easier. I'm starting in, guys. We're starting to speed up now, viewers, because we're running out of time. So, seven. Check. Launch permission launch override. Authorized. So when you press launch permission override, guys, you'll get the reticle. Launch. Right, use the mirror, 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 and... Drop. Launch authorized. Clean drop. Right, gotta get out of dodge. Shit. Come on, come on, get in there, you big fat Jessup. Whatever that is. Nope, oh, she's off center. Uh, she's going for the big pyramid. That was me putting too much rudder in, I didn't need to. Another. God damn it, guys. Something about the freaking Russian planes, they all wanna go right. Ah, uh, whoops. Go on, Simba, go on, Simba, go on, Simba. Simba's gone left. Yeah, it's gonna be way outside. Did you notice any pitch ladder, Simba? I didn't, so I had to drop my eye. So I, I was the uh, that middle stick that's got the yaw indicator in it. Uh -huh. I was trying to keep that s as center as I possibly could. Yeah, we were way south. Something about these Russian planes. Oh, I think this one's gonna be the distance champ. Nah, it's not. It's just not as fast as an F-16. Uh, I'm already at Mach 1.3. I'm pretty close that. And pause. No, it's terrible. It's only six miles. It's only six miles. Nothing else. She's a fine looking bird. Bombs off. Oh, that's a good looking one. If it, uh. Uh. Long nope, long I think that's long. straight vertical. Yeah. Yeah. Still, got, it's height. still got 20 degrees off of straight up, so he's carrying back towards the. Yeah, rings yeah. a little bit. It is. So it it's actually looking pretty good. So is it going to plumb now? It is. There she is. She has nose Head over. Forward. Well done, Poosh. Yeah. This might be good. So you see what's doing there? Do you see how it? Oh, I guess you guys can't see what I see, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I've seen. It's I saw it shift to 60 yeah, degrees. It's starting to fly so But now it's settled at 82, 83. Yep, moving right of center. He's be. in the circles. Well done, he is in the circles. I think Poosh got the, probably the biggest score out of all of this so far. If it was human versus human. All right, well done to two. Well done, flanker. Friggin' saving the flanker's blushes. That is a two, eight. And he got the highest distance thing. Poosh, poosh, poosh. We found what you're really good at. Right, um, resetting. Right, viewers, we are pushing along now. Uh, SU-25, guys, we drop it the same way. All right, viewers, I'm going to show you how to bomb a friggin' pyramid, and that is the end of it. No indication. Okay, I've got the ADI I can use. ADI says... Drop. Did she drop, guys? Yep. It's actually got yeah, really, it's good, really good ADI on it. 80 degrees on the vertical there. I've got a good feeling about that, guys. Nope. It's no, it's trailing away from the circle. Yeah, she's gonna be just outside she's the circle to the south. Yeah. Well, it's not gonna win the distance awards. I can tell you that. Five miles. Uh, so zero dash five. Release. Yeah. How did you feel? It felt quite a stable air airframe to me. Like an yep. A10. I did this one completely by feel. As the bomb's done its thing where yep, it's not I missed, turning down. I missed worse than you did. Yeah, I, I did that one all by like eye, like looking out the window. All right, let's just see how far away you get. Just, just burn it and then we'll move on. How many kiloton yield were we saying that this bomb a has? Variable, uh, fly, uh, fly, a variable fire. Uh, so you can go from eight kilotons to a quarter of a megaton. So it's whatever you want it to be. All right, viewers, MiG-15, let's try this. Switch, switch, go. Bomb away, MiG-15. 
Wow, these are really ugly bombs. I've damn well cooked it. 70 degrees they're falling at. Right, I got zero and I was a four mile zero four for the MIG. <laughs> yeah. Shooting your own bomb down. I wonder what the fans are on it for. I know I ask that every time. Someone always answers, but it's I forget. fusing. Yeah, it's fusing. Ah, you son of a bee. Yeah. Four miles the same as me. Oh, Simba's managed to get his bombs out. Right, one run in the MiG-19, Simba. Off you go. Last claim, US MiG-19, Simba driving. Now this one, it's definitely a low G pull. Right, they'll fall off if you go high G. Best of luck. Wow, you get the award for the world's ugliest bomb, Simba. Bombs away, off you go. I feel like that's just that not being able to pull straight up, like yawning a little. Yep. Seems to be a Russian thing, Simba. I don't think anyone's managed to keep a Russian plane straight in a climb. But I feel like that the distance, like, over the shoulder is not too bad. Well, that is going to count because that's points, Simba. So now it's pretty crap. It's five miles. Welcome back, viewers, to Final Scores. Unfortunately, we just didn't get time to do Jeff 17, Mirage 2000, or Mirage F1, uh, simply because we only get two hours when our time zones overlap and our two hours is gone, and we have to make haste now. Uh, so apologies for that. Uh, so, viewers, if you look at each of these aircraft, there's a number and then another number. The first number is the points scored accuracy. The second number is the amount of miles you got away. The way I'm choosing to do the final scores, and you may choose to do this differently, but I'm showing you everything here, is I've decided to times the first number by two because you can only have up to three in terms of accuracy. Um, and I'm timesing the second number by nothing, by, by one. So, for instance, an F-16, they've got accuracy score of two and a distance of seven gets a total score of 11. That uh, seems a fair way of doing it. So I've just done the ones that looked good and F-16 looked good and got 11. F-18 got uh, a three for accuracy and eight for distance, giving it a total of 14. The MiG-29 got no accuracy because MiG-29, but it's so fast it got 10. So that got 10. Uh, the SU-27 did really well with accuracy and some good uh, distance as well, two and eight, giving it a total of 12. So of the aircraft that we managed to muster together, muster together in two hours, the most accurate, and it hurts me to say this, and all round best was F-18 in a not very scientific, but the best we can do type way. The second score was SU-27. The third score was F-16. And the fourth score was MiG-29. So how about that? Two Cold War, essentially, American planes, two Cold War Soviet planes. Like I said, you will have to take it with a pinch of salt because there are so many vari variables here. Does it comply to our earlier predictions of uh, the modern planes? Well, yeah. F-18 is almost the most modern here, and it won. F-16 is almost the most modern here, and it won. The Russians aren't, but maybe they fluked it. I don't know. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say for a group of people just going into this cold, not bad. You know, that's acceptable for dropping a nuke. All right, viewers, uh, it's the best we can do with that with the time we've got. I hope you enjoyed it otherwise, and bye-bye.